Hello. My name is Melissa Miller. I'm a pastor of a Mennonite congregation in Kitchener-Waterloo. Perhaps you can see that I am a white woman in my 60s, and I have lived and have citizenship in the United States and in Canada. Both of those living environments have shaped how I come to Unit 11, which is about subverting supremacy. Now those are very, very big words, and they are unsettling words. There's a big purpose statement that goes along with that title of subver subverting supremacy. In this lesson, we want to recognize that acting in ways complicit with supremacy is in all of us. That exploitation continues today. We dismantle these systems of supremacy by listening to those oppressed by them and by following God's ways. I believe this is a challenging unit. There's a recommendation that there be a visual to go along with this lesson, and one of the suggestions is for a basin and a towel to be a visual. I think that's particularly valuable for churches that practice foot washing because that keen example of Jesus humbling himself and being a servant friend to his disciples, that's very, very powerful for churches who practice foot washing. I would urge you to have some kind of visual that represents subverting supremacy, and if you need to explain it to the people to do that, um, because I think visuals can help us when we deal with difficult material. There is a um, suggestion on page 63 that you share experiences um, and again, I urge you as a leader to sort of think through some of this in advance so that you have thought about these two experiences, one being where you've had authority over people and another one being where people have had authority over you. And then there's a set of questions that you and your, your listeners can uh, participate in. Which role do you prefer? Why? How can the role of having authority over others be misused or abused? Are you comfortable working within a hierarchical system? Where are times and places where that's happened and what, what do you like about it and what don't you like about it? I think this is a good way to sort of get at um, where domination and submission is in place and how to uh, address that from a biblical story. We do have um, a delightful and well um, detailed story about Naaman and his encounter with the Israeli prophet. Um, and on page 64, the authors encourage us to think about uh, Naaman as a supremacist. So we dig like right into the story and kind of um, use our imaginations to capture that. And, and the authors give us reason for why they would categorize Naaman in that way. I would also say there's humor in this story, and I would sort of lift up the humor as um, Naaman sort of struts back and forth with his power and the upending that the prophet does as well. And um, the way Naaman is humbled by the process and the willingness he has to take risks even when he doesn't like them. I encourage you to return to the positive direction, which is taken by the prophet Elisha's approach. On page 66, we have Elisha responding with grace that flipped Naaman's worldview on its head. So Elisha demonstrates some um, positive attributes for us to consider when we need to confront and challenge supremacy. Elisha handles it with a steady hand. He was intentional, he was deliberate, and he exposed the assumptions and dynamics that Naaman was carrying. And so if we come with gentle exposure and with reproach that leads to grace, those are tools that we can carry when we need to subvert supremacy. There are excellent questions on page 67. There's two sets of them. I think either one of those sets of questions would be good for a group to uh, dive into. And you may have a sense, if we refer back to the language from the previous unit, as you read the room, you may have a sense as to which set of these questions will go better with your particular group of learners. In conclusion, I recommend that you end the lesson with prayer. Uh, that may be your practice as a Sunday school class. 
Uh, I meant to say that in the previous unit and missed it, but I would just encourage you to close each session with prayer because so much is getting unsettled and woken up and there's so much room for the Spirit to work and to transform and to shake us up and to lead us in new ways of grace that I would encourage you to lead or to invite a participant to lead in prayer in closing. As a blessing for you as leader, I would pray that the unsettledness that comes with picking up this topic and leading a group through it would lead to transformation. Transformation for yourself as well as those for in your listening circles and in your congregation and your neighborhoods. And I would pray that you would have the strength to lead with intentionality, with bravery, and with grace.